I'm James Oliver. I am the resident mycologist here at the Metabolic Studio. And today we're going to talk a little bit about connecting our advocacy for the floodplain with our study and investigation into mycorrhizal fungi. And just to remind, mycorrhizal fungi are symbiotic fungi that form relationships with the roots of plants. Uh, they bond together and they create this relationship where the plant trades its sugar that it creates from photosynthesis or sunlight and it trades that with the fungus for uh, water, nutrients, and also uh, protection against various uh, diseases in uh, the soil and things like that. Uh, what that has to do with the floodplain is that the floodplain is actually uh, we're finding an extremely rich source of mycorrhizal fungi. To give context on our other site um, at the Metabolic Studio, what we call the anabolic, uh, we've looked for mycorrhizal fungi before through 20 different samples and sometimes found just small slivers of mycorrhizal fungi, but here we're already finding that almost every sample uh, of roots that are coming from our mule fat have mycorrhizal fungi. We are in what we call circle four or the floodplain circle here at Undevelopment One. And uh, what we're doing is we are collecting some root samples for more microscopy and more study of mycorrhizal fungi. So what you're seeing at these plants all around us are uh, mule fat, um, Baccarus salaxifolia, and uh, yeah, essentially we're just picking different points in this circle and just digging up some roots, collecting them into a jar, and then we're going to take them back to the lab to process them and look at them underneath the microscope to see what's going on. And what we're doing is we're looking for the really, really fine roots, not the thick roots, very fine. Here. That's kind of what we're looking for, but we're just going to grab the soil all around. What we are doing here today is the first step in staining mycorrhizal fungi. So what we're going to do is take this, sift it, just get the roots, the really, really fine roots, cut them into little segments, wash them a little bit, and then what we'll do after that is soak it in sodium hydroxide which acts as a detergent it kind of removes the outer layers of the skin and any kind of soil that's still stuck after that we put vinegar which acidifies the roots and makes them ready for stain and then we soak them in the staining solution which can be ink or tripan blue which is a special stain and then lastly we stick them in a de-stain solution and then we image them after a week Really, the finer the roots, the better. So this is super fine. And that's just distilled water, just to clean some of the dirt off. Try to get these roots cleaner, get the big clumps out. You really don't want that. The roots are right now being washed in potassium hydroxide, which acts as a detergent. So in here, you can see there's these, what we call cassettes. They're these green little trays, and inside of those are the roots that I picked out. And they're soaking in potassium hydroxide, and you can see the color. It was clear at first, but now it's a little murky. And what is happening here is that the potassium hydroxide is acting as kind of a detergent to help get rid of that last bit of like mud or dirt or pieces of wood or bark that are stuck on the roots. We wanna get rid of that. We just wanna have roots so we can stain it. So it's in here and then soon it's gonna go into an acid bath and then it's gonna go into a stain bath. Then we're gonna do an acid wash. So in this case, you can actually just use white vinegar. Other people use um, hydrochloric acid. 
which is harder to get and more dangerous, but you can use vinegar. So we're just gonna wash it in vinegar. And this is kind of um, acidifying the roots and getting it ready for the stain. So the first step was to clean the roots. This one is sort of opening up the roots. And we're just gonna let this soak for about 10 minutes. So we're gonna just make a quick solution. This is our stain solution that will actually give the mycorrhizae their blue color. So we're using, this is called Tripan Blue. You can also use pen ink if you're trying to go very DIY. Um, this is just distilled water. And then we're gonna use this pipette. I'm just gonna take out some. It's not a lot. That's all it really needs. Now we can take it out of our acid bath, taking it out of the vinegar solution. And now we transfer into the stain solution. We're gonna take this and we're going to put it on a hot plate. And we're gonna, oh, gonna, plug this in. gonna heat it up to about 90 degrees Celsius. So the staining solution has been heated to 90 degrees and we've let it cool overnight. And we're gonna take it over and we're gonna wash it twice. So now we're gonna put this into our de-stain solution and you'll see there's other older samples in there. You can store them in here for a long time. <clears throat> but the de-stain solution, it, right now if we were to look at these underneath the microscope, they'd be way too blue. So it'd be like full of background. Um, it'd be hard to really see the mycorrhizae. Everything would just be blue. So we wanna de-stain it a little bit for about a week. Then we'll take it out and look at it underneath the microscope. Uh, we've got a uh, sample of a root on our microscope and our microscope is connected to a camera, to some software. What we see here is the, the fungus itself. So we'll sort of blow it up. And you can kind of see these uh, blue stained little uh, webs or mycelium is the mycorrhizal fungus inside of the plant root itself. So here the little hyphae or mycelium that run through it, these larger dots are called vesicles. That's where they store nutrients, water, and even heavy metals. So um, we'll be doing things like uh, the software allows us to measure and um, talk about how many uh, arbusc arbuscules or vesicles or hyphae, things that are part of this symbiosis are in there. And that lets us know how um, the term is colonized, the, uh, the roots are. And that gives us a good comparison to say, you know, the floodplain is this rich with mycorrhizae versus different uh, soils or different areas or techniques that we're testing out are this rich with mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae and roots together form this powerful uh, symbiosis metaphorically that uh, enable the uh, organisms to sequester carbon outside of the ocean, which is the largest carbon cycle on the planet, the zone between plant roots and the microorganisms and fungi that live underneath them are the second largest source of carbon sequestration and cycling. Um, so we're trying to advocate for the floodplain for not only being good for plants, but also being powerful for uh, sequestering carbon. And then also these are important tools when you're looking at trying to clean up metal and clean up uh, toxic sites of their various pollutants as well. This powerful bond between the two really enable um, the living systems to cleanse their environment or at least make them non-toxic.